This morning, I want to share from Psalm 16. And I remember many years ago, uh, a man made a disparaging comment about sh- preaching from the Psalms. Uh, after a service, he said to me, preaching from the Psalms, that's like preaching out of the hymnal. <laughs> I said, yeah. I don't understand the problem. Because some of the richest theology that we find in Scripture is right in the psalm book. It's also found in our hymnals, in many different hymnals. But this morning we're looking at Psalm 16. Psalm 16 begins, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. The proclamation is true and the words resonate with the kind of fear that Every one of us has experienced, and not just at this moment, but that kind of fear that comes with living, that kind of fear that comes from being alive and experiencing something that makes you say, God help me. The second verse ends, I have no good apart from you. What is this good? Does the psalmist mean to insinuate that apart from God, there's nothing good? And if so, how would the psalmist respond to a non-religious person who argues that everything good is apart from God and that religion is simply a source for wars and fighting? It can be hard to respond to that. People have certainly fought wars based on religious disagreement. People who claim to be Christian also argue with one another and hurt one another, often just with words, but sometimes the hurt can be quite deep, and sometimes it can be physical. The psalmist doesn't make it universal in the sense of applying to all humanity. In this verse, it says, I have no good apart from you. It's me. In Psalm 16, we find words of comfort, words of hope, and words of joy. Verse 4 tells us the the psalmist affirms the first commandment, you shall have no gods before me, by saying, those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. In verse 6, We have one of those incredible lines of Scripture seeing the boundary falling for me in pleasant places. Pleasant places. I love that expression. I've always wondered a little bit what it means, especially in days like this. What are the pleasant places we find? What are the pleasant places in our lives? As we continue kind of tracing through this psalm, in verse 7, we see God giving counsel, and then in verse 9, a glad heart. Actually, in the Hebrew, it says a glad kidney. We translate it as heart because heart is the emotional seat of the Western civilization, but in the ancient Near Eastern culture, it was the kidney. Translators have long made that kind of sort of cultural correction. Can you imagine Huey Lewis singing, The kidney of rock and roll is a beaten, or Celine Dion singing, My kidneys will go, and then on just lasts for minutes and minutes as she sustains. I don't know about that. Psalm 16 is a Davidic psalm. That means it's related to David. Gregory Troll summarizes it, writing, David's unmatched present joys in Yahweh produced a future confident hope of unbroken fellowship and resurrection for him and the Holy One. It's about having unrivaled delight in God, confidence in God's future. One way to apply Psalm 16 to us today is to consider the way in which the Lord fills the personal horizon of the psalmist. Every one of the lines says, in one way or another, the Lord is everything to me. The Lord 
is my Lord, my God, my destiny, my counsel, my security. The, the whole passage confesses the Lord is my life. That's why the psalmist is confident of life. It's this focus on God, absorption with God. It's this identity with God, the Lord who is the source of my life, which gives faith a confident hold on life. This isn't bad for today. We could also see in Psalm 16 a confessional element. I, I have no good apart from you, God. That theme echoes throughout with references to the pleasant places, a goodly heritage, complete joy, and pleasures evermore. James Mays writes, the psalm is full of joy in the Lord. Life and joy go together. Life is consummated in joy where death is removed as a threat. Life is finally free for complete joy in the presence of God who alone can deliver us from Sheol. Now, I just want to pause a moment to look at that word Sheol. In the Hebrew Bible, Sheol is the invisible world of departed souls. Sheol is, isn't a state of unconsciousness. It's not removed from God's jurisdiction. It has a Greek equivalent, Hades, which is the state or place of the dead in Greek culture. But it's unlike this modern idea of hell, which developed from an old Saxon word, helia, meaning underworld. Regardless of what the psalmist meant by Sheol, the point really is that God can deliver people from it. It's kind of that Easter theme. God has power over death. It's kind of that confidence, that hope that God is still God and is powerful and is capable of being with us and seeing us through this moment right now. Therefore, we can return to believing that the Lord is everything to me. And I can again say with the psalmist, I have no good apart from you, God. With God as our deliverer from death and our source of joy, in essence, our everything, we can find joy, complete joy in the Lord. This psalm can be like a prayer or an affirmation of our faith. Of course, we don't believe that once we enter a relationship with God, there'll be no more difficult times or pain in our lives. If we believe that, the, the direct implication would be that everyone who experiences difficulties or anything other than joy hasn't really reached a relationship with God. And that's just ridiculous. Everyone has bad days. Everybody. It doesn't matter what religion or if someone's non-religious. Everybody, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, secular humanist, transcendentalist, Everybody, our freedom leads to some of our difficulties, some of our bad days. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. Sometimes it's our own freedom to make the wrong choice, to do the wrong thing, to, in essence, intentionally get ourselves into trouble. But sometimes it's due to the free actions of another person. Freedom's a double-edged sword. It allows us to say boldly, on our own, with no compunction from any outside force, I have no good from you. But freedom also allows someone to hurt other people. On the one hand, it's wonderful to be free. To be able to act according to our own desires and not as some pre-programmed automaton. On the other hand, when another person's freedom causes us pain, we experience the sharp side of freedom. The desert Abbas and Amas offer some wisdom for understanding this aspect of freedom and can speak to this idea of being able to shift back around to the kind of hope reflected in Psalm 16. They were the men and women, these desert Abbas and Amas, who lived in the deserts of northern Egypt around the 4th century. 
this group of radical Christians practiced extreme social distancing way before it was cool. They lived apart from one another in the, and apart from the world way out in the desert. They also practiced asceticism or serious self-deprivation in order to purify their hearts and grow closer to God. Their teachings often took the form of short stories or sayings. And one of their elders once said, it's not because of evil thoughts that we're condemned, but only because we make use of these thoughts. It's not because of evil thoughts that we're condemned. It's only because we make use of them. We all have the freedom to decide whether or not to own the words of the psalmist, I have no good apart from you, or we can make use of our own evil thoughts. We can give in to the more difficult aspects of living in social isolation, or we can live in faith. We can surrender to fear and worry, or we can live in hope. We want to say, God, you are my everything, yet we find ourselves comfortable even when God might be calling us to engage more fully with the world around us. Some of us might have cozy, pleasant places in which to live during this time. But what about others? Some of us might feel healthy, maybe even invulnerable, but what about those who don't? God moves in relationships. And this is a psalm for everyone. Even though that phrase is personalized and owned by the psalmist, this is one that draws us together and connects us, as Alba was saying during his blessing, as a family. When we climb inside Psalm 16 and embrace God's path for life, it invites us to engage with the world. It calls us to share our joys. It pulls on us to extend our pleasant places to others. We can embrace the prayer of the psalmist. We can open ourselves to let God fill our personal horizon and say, the Lord is everything to me. Now, how can I reflect that? with everyone I encounter? How can I live that out in a way that draws people closer to Christ? How can I live out my life in a way that reflects the hope of Easter, the power of God over the tomb? Now's the time to discover some pleasant places in our lives. God protects us, is with us, and provides strength so we can go forth this day in faith, and we can recognize what God's doing and start to attune our ears to God's voice so that we can hear ways that we can still be God's hands and feet even now. And when we do, those pleasant places of Psalm 16 extend way beyond the beauty of wherever you are right now. They extend out into all the earth, and we get to share the love and grace of God. Amen.